Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Shalisha and this is my 10th year teaching. I currently teach first grade. What you see me doing as the first step to making an interactive anchor chart is drawing the foundation. Whether you print or actually draw by hand your materials, you need to do that step first. Go ahead and organize your anchor chart in the way that you would want it to look if it were posted. Next, I laminate everything, the anchor chart itself and the pieces that are going to go on it to make it interactive. This way I can use it again and again. Now this is the tedious step and this takes the most time. You have to cut and prepare everything for your lesson. To make my anchor charts interactive, I use Velcro dots. I put the dots on the anchor chart itself and on the back of the pieces that the kids will have to sort to make sure that they are placing it in the right place and that they understand the content being taught. This one's fiction. This one's fiction. This one's not. Yeah, it's Tell him why. These, these, just men are imagining. Okay. Hey, and tell him why you think that's not fiction. You can fix things in the story. Gives facts. You can get facts. So why is Gibbs facts non-fiction? Because non-fiction gives you information and facts give you also information. Okay. Tell me about your title. My pet So is this a good or a service? What is it? Look again. What about this one? Okay. What did you and your partner talk about? That is a service. A service? How do you know it's a service? The spider spiders help other people in case of an emergency. Okay. What's yours? A service. How do you know? Because somebody pays a, somebody to teach um, people. Okay. can be interactive and be used in lessons to help your students 
um, gain the knowledge necessary to master the content that you're teaching. In this video, I showed maker charts from several different um, strands. So I showed um, social studies, I showed reading, I also used them in science, and sometimes I used them in math as well. So in this video, I showed reading and social studies because those were the subjects that we were doing something really high key boring. So I kind of like to mix it up a little bit and make it engaging. I also showed several ways that you could use the anchor chart. So just to recap, um, the first time I introduced the anchor chart activity with them, you know, for nonfiction and fiction and for economics, which are the two topics that we were kind of focusing on, um, I had the cards and I had them work with a partner to determine where the cards should be placed on the anchor chart and then after that you know I had them switch the cards and when they switched the cards they got a new card they decided where that card would be placed and they always have to explain why so in the video you kind of hear me saying you know why is this a producer or why do you think this is a good or service or why do you think it's fiction why do you think it's not fiction so just reiterating that they should be able to explain the knowledge of what they're doing as well then the fun part comes along because they can't wait and they're super excited to go ahead and put it up on the board on the anchor chart so we do that two days in a row where they get different cards and then they have to put them on the anchor chart so it's always cool because they never get the same card and if they do get the same card they're like oh i know this one already and then the last way that I did it was like a relay race game. So with um, fiction and nonfiction, we've been working on fiction and nonfiction for two or three weeks now. So they should really have it down packed. So what I did was I took the two anchor charts that we had made for fiction and nonfiction and I made it a race. So I split them up into two teams, team A, team B, and the team who finishes first gets a point and then the team who has all of their pieces in the correct category get a point. So if you finish first and had all of your pieces in the correct category, you get two points and vice versa. So we do the best two out of three with that and then everyone ended up getting Skittles. I oh, can't see it, but they ended up getting Skittles for participating. Um, so yeah, so that's just another way to make things interactive in your classroom and take a traditional teaching utensil, such as an anchor chart, and make it more meaningful and more sticky for the students. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to the end of the video and you realize you like this content or you know someone who would love, love, love to see teacher content, fashion, lifestyle, things like that, then go ahead and click like. Also subscribe down below, turn on your bell notifications and share this page with a friend. See you guys next time. Bye.